Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Andy King, host of King Talk Tuesdays, former New York City Council member, and the son of a veteran, Andy King Sr. We are here today to talk about the sadness that veterans go through. Last year, this year, actually it was last year, January 3rd, we stood on the corner of 161st Street in the Grand Concourse across from the Bronx County Courthouse. 12 degrees, it was cold. But the veterans will tell you, when you're on the terrain, the weather doesn't matter. When you serve in this country, words don't matter. When you serve in this country, only thing that matters is that you give your heart to making sure that you were told to do and you did what you were asked to do to protect this country. Unfortunately, so many of our veterans come home without a hug, without a care, without resources to help them assimilate back into society. It's unfair and it's not right. So many families deal with their family members who go to serve. They come back a different person. What happens when that veteran comes back? It may not be everybody's story, but today we're talking about the story of veterans who get displaced when they come back home. We're talking about veterans who find themselves homeless when they come back home. We're talking about veterans who have mental challenges who don't get the proper services. Well, we're calling on government today and everyone who says they care about veterans to do their part in making sure that no veteran is left alone. Making sure that no veteran is left alone. Making sure no veteran is left alone. That's right. Yeah. You're going to hear from a number of servicemen and women who have struggled upon their return into civilian life. From mental health challenges to just finding yourself a meal to unemployment and more importantly, just being able to care for themselves. I got to ask the question. We ask men and women to go serve, whether it's in Iraq, or whether it's in Korea, or whether it's Afghanistan, or whether it's just on this soil. But then we can take care of everyone else, except for the people who fought for people to be free. Something's wrong with that narrative. America cannot claim not to have funding. America cannot claim to have, not have the resources to take care of veterans. Now we know that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Now it's time for us to learn that the veterans have the squeakiest wheel on the planet. Yes. So we're calling on everybody, whether you're the federal government, state government, city government, it's time to do your part. Because it's your neighbor, your sons, your husbands, your mothers, your aunts who serve this country to come back to be a firefighter to come back to be NYPD, or just come back to say, we need help. Right. So it's now time for everyone to wake up. No veteran should be laying on a park bench. No veteran should be lost in the shelter system. No veteran should be placed in the same system that our civilians are placed in when they need help. They think differently. They behave differently. They act differently. And that's why we call them to serve this country when it comes to wars and protecting this land. So when they return, there should be a system dedicated only to veterans, whether it's provide them housing, employment, services, whatever they need to be able to live, quote unquote, whatever normalcy life they can live. No longer will we accept another veteran being homeless. If there is a population of 25% or 60% or 70% of homeless in the city of New York and 40% as, as veterans, something is wrong. 20% of, of homeless are veterans is too much. 2% of veterans homeless is too much because when they were fighting, you wasn't worried about them being homeless, you was worried about them taking care of your safety and your comfortability here on the land. So now that they're back, we got to make sure they're good. So that being said, to all the veterans here, those who have transitioned, we love you and we say hoorah! 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 I want to bring up right now, my good partner is doing a lot of good work not only for black veterans for social justice, but a U.S. Navy vet from the Iraq Gulf War, my brother, Kevin C. Maggot. Good morning, everyone. And Good morning, brother. And I want to thank you. I want to thank um, uh, former city councilman Andy King for um, actually helping me to secure this space to say what I'm about to say. 
um, I think it's a, an atrocity um, what's happening to veterans, not only on a city level, but on a state level and a, a federal level. At the end of the day, I don't expect much from the city because our contract was made through the federal government. And what we're getting here is city interpretation of what was given to us federally. So what I'm asking for, we hear so many times, how can we make New York City more veteran friendly? How can we make New York City more veteran friendly? In order to make New York City more veteran friendly, um, New York City has to do something more veteran specific. And what does veteran um, specific look like? It looks like New York City veteran housing. We're not just 10% or 20% is earmarked for veterans, but the whole entire building. Um, what else would look like veteran, something veteran friendly would look like Metro cards reduced, half price, 30% off. They're going up. Metro cards are going up and my salary isn't. So, you know, tell me you appreciate me by having ultimately, when you come into New York, we see the lights and the glitz and the glamour of 42nd Street. How many times do we see welcome veterans, New York City appreciate you? We don't see that. I took the train last weekend um, and I had to shuttle over for the seven, uh, the shuttle, I'm sorry. And I seen a train that had blues clues all the way around it, wrapped inside and out. When we did it, it was called graffiti. It was dis you know, it was, it was an eyesore, but I guess if you pay for it, it's okay. But it's Blue's Clues. If you're veteran friendly, why don't you have veteran fam families and veteran issues on wrapped around that train? And as far as the homeless crisis is concerned in New York City, my issue with New York City is actually a state, a city, state, federal issue. It's it, it, it's a it's a trifecta, so to speak. Um, if I became homeless tomorrow, I'm told to go into a New York City. Uh, shelter where I'm given a New York CARES number for the perpetuity of my life and I'm given that number and I got to sit in shelter for 90 days to obtain a, 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 a HUD VASH voucher which is a federal housing voucher for veterans. With that federal um, voucher, with that HUD VASH voucher, I'm told I'm only relegated to the five boroughs. My question is, I didn't know that the city and state of New York had jurisdiction over the federal government, I should be able to use that. Let, let the state feel some of our pain. I should be able to take that federal voucher up to Middletown, Orange County, um, Rochester, Buffalo. Let the state say, hey, yay, they're coming all the way down here to be homeless. We could send them back up. I'm a federal, I didn't make a, a, a contract with the city of New York. I didn't make a contract with the state of New York. I made a contract with the federal government when I went to war as a war vet. So I should be able to go anywhere that I want to go. Mm -hmm. And so that's my issue with the city and the state. As, as it pertains to homeless in, in general, until we are able to take the corporate plutocracy out of homelessness, we're always going to have it. Because someone's, everyone's getting paid from homelessness except the people that are homeless. Ooh. It's the, the math the math is easy. Follow the money. And and, and, and in closing, you know, I I, I think I want to believe that the city of New York has veteran issues at heart. I really do. And I spoke to a couple of city council members. There's things that I, I just found out like there there are some New York City um, uh, 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 veteran housing. I didn't know that up in the Bronx. Um, but the, the current uh, mayor, the current administration, didn't even find it fit enough to change the, the commissioner. We have an old commissioner from an old previous uh, uh, um, administration. So how do you, when I, when, I sat, when I sat out there in 12 degrees with Mr. King, the first thing I said was, what was your intentions as it pertained to veteran and veteran services. And you didn't think enough of us to even say, hey, we're gonna change and get a new direction. We have to change the narrative. The narrative didn't work back then. What do you think is gonna make it work right now? Um, no shade, but at the end of the day, I question the uh, legitimacy of 
the current commissioner. He's a, and he's a nice guy. This isn't personal, but I'm, I'm in the business of veterans. But he's a commissioned officer. He's from West Point. He comes from privilege. He's, and, and, and he's a commissioned officer. I service veterans on a daily basis that are homeless. Ask me how many were commissioned officers. I could count on one hand and one finger. So if you're detached from the problem, perhaps you become the problem. Mm. And with that said, I'm gonna give this microphone back to Mr. King. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for all of these veterans. This is an ongoing thing. We're coming up to Albany next before we go to the federal government. Thank you. Hoorah! 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 I want to thank Kevin Megan not only for the time he served this country in Iraq, but taking the mantle and fighting strong for our homeless veterans. You know, he's talked about not throwing any shade. And I'm just going to say I want to thank Councilmember Robert Holden, who is the chair of Veterans Services here, Veterans Committee here in the City Council. Um, may his health get better. But he stands strong when it comes to having a real conversation about veterans. And again, if, you know, if you're not doing the real work, then you got to step aside and let somebody who's willing to do so. That's all we're asking. Um, veterans can't afford the bureaucracy. Veterans can't afford for timelines based on, on the system. Veterans need services and help right now. Yeah. Next person I want to bring up is the commander of NAP Vets in the city of New York. I want to bring up my brother, Atia Day. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I say to my vets, I salute you. As King, uh, uh, Andy King started off, we're going to start with a big hoorah! 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 All that means is that we do stand together. As a commander of a Bronx chapter of NAVET, National Association for Black Veterans. We stand unified with all veterans' issues throughout the city, state, and federal government. We stand united. When Brother Megan was speaking about that homeless vet who was going through some real deep atrocities for a period of four to five, four to eight years, give a little, take a little. He's talking about me specifically. And in my, I am now a owner of a HUD Vash voucher, which as the protocol go after a year, I could take the voucher anywhere, but up until a year, I'm confined to the five boroughs. Okay, had to deal with that. I was in a situation where I had access to an apartment at the bottom of Westchester several years ago. And I had the HUD Vash voucher. I went to HUD Vash and I told him, listen, I got a place right at the end of Westchester, one bedroom, blah, 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 blah. They said I couldn't take it because the voucher only served the five boroughs. Now, ask me, how did I feel about that? I felt very enraged because I felt it was an injustice. Not that the program doesn't serve a purpose, but in that instance, for them not to say, okay, let him take that apartment, which was less than five, let's say five to 10 miles from where I was living, at the same time, I could have went thousands of miles in any of the five barrels. There's, there's an imbalance there, for sure. But it happened, and we are in the process of addressing those things. We have taught vets how to not really ask for support by their training alone. Well, it's time to reverse that narrative. It's time to start allowing our vets or bringing our vets together to seek and get the support that needed. Uh, there was a place where, uh, you know, we had monies here in the city going out across the seas by the billions of dollars. 
and we talking about vets and vets issues and it's falling on dead ears. Something wrong with the narrative, as Kevin said. Something is definitely wrong with that narrative. Now we're asking, don't just thank us for our service. Show us that we care. Show us that we are appreciated even as we stand every day. How many vets have passed away not having their full potential met? I know, I know a lot of them. A lot of the vets that I go, I operate with today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this one more story after I finish this. A lot of the vets that I deal with today are no longer young. We're no longer 18, 19, 25, 30 years old. Some of us are well into our 70s. Some of them in the late 70s, as such as myself. When you're 76, you're in your late 70s. Regardless of the uh, denial, yeah, I'm a, I am a real senior vet. Okay, and, and I say that to say I have a vet, 91 years of age, who is current today, who is still very lucid of all the things that's going on in his life. He's seeking service, yet he's not getting the service that he seeks. There's something wrong with that narrative. That ain't right. And we need that to have right. it looked into. It ain't right. We need to have it looked to, looked into. With that, I'm gonna take my leave as I'm de with a, I'm dealing with a pinch nerve mm. that doesn't allow me to stand long or walk straight. It's a problem, so we're looking into that also. Again, I thank you, vets. I salute you. God bless one and all. You know, people keep forgetting that, as Brother Day just mentioned, <laughs> veterans grow older. And they're your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-uncles. It's deplorable to even think that a 91-year-old has to search, seek, for, seek for services. Something just ain't right. Our next speaker I want to bring up from the Army, retiring, Sister Deborah Simon. Good morning, good afternoon, whichever it is. Can you hear me? Can't see you. Oh. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, whichever it is. I came to represent the female vets. I am an Iraqi vet. However, my husband was a Vietnam vet who never got any benefit. But my issue is the female vets who are who are who come home from war, who are homeless or have children. Their children have been taken away from them because they were not able to navigate the system to help them get the benefits that they needed. And sometimes we think of women veterans being in the military or going to war and not being out there what you're called the front line. But we've been out there and our lives have been in danger and all of that. And the problem is for us is that nobody sees us as a veteran because we're a female. They just think that we were paper pushers. However, we did just as much as the men. And kudos and thank you to all the brothers that supported us. But coming back, women are just lost in the system. Sometimes we're afraid to come into the system to get the support that we need. So my thing is, how do we support the women who are the silent piece of the, the veterans who are here? We've, we've seen stories of the women who were at the post office in the uh, Vietnam War and all those other wars that never got the recognition that they needed. So let's all galvanize together in addition to helping the brothers Help the females get all that they need. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> Help our brothers. Help our brothers. Help our sisters. Help our sisters. Help our brothers. Help our brothers. Help our sisters. Help our sisters. Save a veteran's life today. Save a veteran's life today. Hoorah! 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 Our next person who's coming up to speak is from the Air Force, Brother Manny Rodriguez.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon be beautiful veterans. Good uh, afternoon, Bella. I am so grateful to be among and standing on the shoulders of those of you that served before me, those of you that are not here today that have died for me. My name is Manuel Rodriguez. I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran. I'm here on behalf of Dominican Veterans of America. The President Samuel Ravello could not make it today, so I'm here to speak on behalf of these gorgeous veterans that are here standing as a Gideon Army. You might see a small group, but you see a mighty group that are here to fight for the veterans that cannot fight today. 200,000 plus veterans in the city of New York. We represent them. Dominican Veterans of America stands in solidarity with anything that has to do with getting services for veterans that are due, that are due, that are due to veterans. Yes, they are. Someone said, don't say thank you. I do say I am appreciative when you say thank you. Do something about it. That's right. That's right. Do something about it. Do something about it. I'm going to be short, and I'm just going to leave a question for all of us today. All of New York City and the veteran, the 200,000 veterans that reside in this awesome city. How many veterans are in the New York City Council representing us today? Good point. We talk about strategy we talk about tactics we need strategy and we need tactics that's right and we love i love your tactic but we need strategy we need veterans so i'm going to challenge veterans to come out and and not only vote strong but also run for office so that when we come to city right. council there's someone that we can talk to that knows what we're saying Right, and understands right. the struggle of a veteran in this great city. That's right. Thank you so much for this challenge. God bless you all. Dios bendiga a todos. Amen. All right. Yeah, sure. Okay, so they've asked me to... Mi nombre es Manuel de Jesús Rodríguez. Soy un veterano de la Fuerza Aérea. Estamos aquí representando en solidaridad con los veteranos. El presidente Samuel Ravelo no pudo estar. Yo estoy representa, representando Dominican Veterans of America. Estoy aquí con estos bellos veteranos que han servido esta, esta nación y esta ciudad de magnitud. Estamos para pelear para servicios que son debido a los veteranos que han servido. No es que le estamos preguntando, le estamos diciendo, necesitamos servicios no ayer, necesitamos servicios hoy. Pregunta, ¿cuántos veteranos nos representan en el City Council? Pregunta, ¿necesitamos estrategia? ¿Necesitamos tácticas? La estrategia es que, y invito a veteranos que corran y se postulen para posiciones en, la, en el Consejo Municipal. Dios le bendiga a todos y buen día. You know, it was a great, it was a great man that I once knew, a union president. His name was J.J. John, Johnson. And one of the things he used to say, the leadership must reflect the membership. And then what does that mean? When we talk about people who run for office or in office, they got to reflect the people that they represent. So if you don't have a veteran that's inside the walls of City Hall or in Albany or in Washington having a real conversation, conversations can bounce off the wall and never land where they're supposed to learn. But when we ask these veterans, we ask our servicemen and women to go out and fight, there was no politics in play. They did what they had to do to make sure that the enemy was kept at bay. Today, the veterans are standing here to fight their fight for themselves. They're fighting for their own lives. Anyone of you who care about a veteran's life, now it's time to cross the street and stand on the side of a veteran. Let's save our veterans. 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 The next speaker I want to bring up is from the Navy, my good brother, Gene Edwards. Good afternoon to the American Free Press, and good afternoon to you all. 
My name is Gene Edwards and I am the male district leader for the 79th Assembly District in the Bronx. I am also a naval veteran of 10 years and I served three combat tours in Iraq. Wow. Now my Spanish isn't as fluent as the gentleman before me, so I hope that Telemundo 47 has t subtitles. <laughs> I was at this press conference in the Bronx on this date last year in the 12 Degrees with Mr. King and Mr. Meggett. And we asked the mayor for a sit down. Later on that afternoon, the mayor held a press conference outside of a restaurant in Lower Manhattan. And somebody from the press asked, uh, Mr. Mayor, did you see the press conference with the veterans earlier today? His reply was yes, and I look forward to sitting down with him. You can check the archives. It's on NBC, PIX11, Telemundo 47. A year later, we still haven't had the sit down. That's right. Now, we began last year talking about having a sit down with veterans addressing veterans homelessness. And we ended the year with building a $16 million tent on Wards Island for immigrants. Excuse me, but I believe in wisdom is calling things by its proper name. They are not migrants. They're not coming here to work for a short period of time and return home. They're here to stay. And we welcome them because New York City is, in fact, a sanctuary city. As veterans, we don't just take an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, we take an oath to defend everyone within this nation, whether they're legal, illegal, born here, or immigrated here. We defend all. And in, in this, although the two are separate and distinct, I understand the influx of migrants or immigrants is separate and distinct for what we're asking for, for, for the military veterans that are homeless, but understand this, the military veteran is not asking for luxury housing with cathedral ceilings, marble floors, and a fireplace. We're asking for basic human needs, shelter. The five levels of human psychology as outlined by Dr. Maslow, level one is basic human needs, which is food and shelter. We're asking for basic human needs. Stated differently, we're not asking for anything more than anyone has, but we refuse to accept anything less yeah. than what yeah. anybody else has. Right. That is the want of the military veteran. And with that, I digress. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brother King. Hurrah. 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 You know, we started this conversation about what our veterans have earned. And Brother Edward said it best. They've earned it. They're not asking for marble floors and glass ceilings, but they've earned the right for basic accommodations. When they're out fighting in the terrain and it's 12 degrees, it's rain, it snows, there's bushes. My dad told me, he said he couldn't understand himself as a young man patrolling at night in Korea. And he's like, what is a kid from Brunswick, Georgia doing out here? <laughs> but he came to serve his country. So it didn't matter, he made the sacrifice. The least that we can do in this country when they return home, whatever sacrifice we have to make for our veterans, just do it. 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 So as we get to wrap up, I want to bring up Who's that last one? Brother Herbert. This man is full of energy. I got to give him credit because he moves around. He got a lot of energy and he's been through it and he served. And I mean, when he served, he served and he served hard and he's here to tell his story. Let's give it up to our brother Sweat. Come on up here, Sweat. I'm asking all city employees to step a little closer to this conversation. Tell them. There you go. There you go. We voted for you. That's right. That's right. We need to talk to you today. That's right.
some of us gave some. And then there's some of us whom gave all. This is what you need to understand when you're inside this building practicing new concepts to take care of us. This is what the city, state, and the United States of America should do first. Take care of us veterans. Right. Take care of those that serving right now. Right. That means protect them. That means honor them. And most of all, that means bring them home. Yeah. Leave none of them behind. <laughs> you hear us talking to you, city council people. You see us here struggling, trying to make you understand our burdens. But it seems to fall on deaf ears. Let this day be in remembrance. Let us not forget those that have died for this country. That's right. They were my fathers, my uncles, my cousins, yeah. and my children yeah. have served. Yeah. That's right. I'm not only serving, I'm not only serving this country for the Constitution, I'm serving this country for life. Ooh. For life. Not play games at war. We practice the games and then we apply them to reality. Killing is not easy. It's never going to be subsided within us. It's going to always be with us. What we have done, it's not a game. It's not just physical. It's mental, and it's so stuck up here that you need to open up agencies to receive us. You, city council people, you, Mayor Adams, all of you congressional people need to take care of those that took care of you. You not only need to understand this today, but you need to practice what you speak. You need to practice how you walk. And most definitely, you city employees need to practice whom to take care of first. Like you heard a few of my comrades speak before you especially this female back here. I guess you don't know that she toted a weapon. I guess you don't know she suffers just like I have suffered. PTSD, amputations of parts of our bodies, our brain has been taken away at war. How do you substitute it now? by us coming out here in front of City Hall and asking, begging, trying to make communication with you people that can benefit us for life forevermore. What do you mean by that, Sweat? Because a person like myself, I'm committed, my life, to these veterans, to these councilmen and women to die for you today if necessary. What is your commitment to us? Mm. Who are you? Right. What do you do for us? Do you think I served in a war? 
to just come home and be spit upon, not to be acknowledged, not to represent. I go to that cemetery every year, Veterans Memorial Day, and I look at them graves. I go to D.C. I look at that monument on that wall, all of those names. What do you do, city of New York? What do you do, councilman and mayor of the biggest, baddest city in America? Well, let me tell you what you do. All you do is sit up there and receive a check. You don't understand that there are more veterans committing suicide today than regular people running the streets of New York. There's more veterans today living under these damn bridges, living on the side of highways, sleeping on the trains, standing in front of the hospitals that they won't let them in. This is a disgrace, America. This is a disgrace to watch my people gather here together to explain to you that we need your help. We need the biggest city to turn themselves around and start amplifying ways of assisting us from not committing a suicide. From not getting ill and being the last to be taken care of because he don't have a hard bash. This one don't have that. That one, but you know what we have? We had the guts. We had the willpower. We had the love for this city, state, and country to die for you. To die for you. What will you die for in New York City? What will WPIX and QRT and SYD stand for? I want you to understand this message today. I'm not here playing the game. Like my man just said, my comrade said, I'm getting old. I can't keep fighting like this. I can't keep breaking it down to you that we, some gave some. We gave all. I suffer 100% service-connected post-traumatic disability. You know what that means? Psychologically, I dream, walk the streets, and feel for those veterans that I feel that I did not do my all because I'm not in the grave yet. So that's my duty for the rest of my life, to serve these veterans, to serve the active servicemen, to serve, yes, my congressional leaders, to serve those out there that's talking at this time when they should be listening. I'm talking to the mayor, I'm talking to the president, and I'm talking to you public relationship people. Tell them what you heard today. Identify with real people. We don't wear these patches. I'm a Buffalo soldier. That means that's the number one soldier. That's the one that conquered this country. That's the one that's still standing before you that I'll die for you today. Don't you ever forget the difference between life and death. Don't you ever forget it people of America. I want to thank you for giving me these minutes to speak to you, but I want you to think about what I'm telling you. You carry the news. You got the big time paychecks. You're the ones who go in this office and make the laws. Get in there and give us some back up. This is why we are here today. Back us Oh, we're not just jokes. We're real soldiers. We're real. Do you know what the Vietnam War was about? 
Do you know what the Iraqi war was about? Do you know when they brought down that World Trade building, why it went back up? Do you understand who did that? Who did that was not only you regular people running around paying taxes, but it was those soldiers that went out there and swore they will revenge that 9-11 day. And we've been doing it ever since. People, thank you. I know, I know he put it all in perspective for us, um, but we do have one final speaker. We want to give him a few minutes because Brett touched on the mental capacity of those who returned back home. And the numbers of suicide along our servicemen and seven um, servicemen is real. And while we address it or not address it, the organizations out here can tell more about it. So I want to bring up here, Brother Colon, come on up, Jose Rios, to talk more about it. Give it up. Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Rios, and I am a U.S. Army veteran, program director for the Veterans Suicide Prevention Program at Black Veterans for Social Justice. This is a program provided through the Department of Veterans Affairs in an effort to mitigate, in an effort to minimize suicide among military veterans. Military veterans no longer have to suffer in silence. I'm talking to my veteran brothers, I'm talking to my veteran sisters. You do not have to suffer in silence anymore. There is help. Come talk to me at BVSJ. Thank you so very much for your time. So as we re recap and, re um, you know, today was all about, again, making sure that we bring a strong word to those in government that have the power and those who have the financial package and those who have the policies that can help veterans no longer be homeless. Those who have the power to put together a system that only navigates veterans from the time they return and land on their soil, from the time they look for employment, from the time they need mental health services, from the time they need food and everything else that they need. That they no longer go into the regular general population of services because their thinking is different. Their actions are different. Their behaviors are different. And we got to touch base on the parents, the mothers that come home. We forget about our mothers that come home because when they come home, the children are, are went to war. We forget about that when the parents go to war, the whole family goes to war and have to manage and deal with that. So these, the, our veterans are a different breed of human beings come home and they must be treated and respected and served as such. Mr. Mega, would you like to bring some closing words, good brother? I would like to thank everyone for coming out today. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today. Um, like I was saying, this is an ongoing, um, we're, we're, not, we're not going nowhere. I take that back. We are going somewhere. We're going forward with this issue. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, we're going to the state, and then we're eventually we're going to the, we're going to get down to the feds. Um, the Biden administration recently gave three hundred billion dollars. We want clarity. We want to be at the table of how that money is being spent. We we either when we, we're, we're going to be at the table because we're not going to we're going to be taken off the menu. And, and again, let's take the corporate plutocracy out of homelessness. That's the only way you're going to actually. Uh, solve the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. I just want to ask real quick, does anyone from the press have any questions? No? Okay. And I also want to thank um, Concrete Resources, who's not usually, who, they're not uh, a veteran organization, but they've always been a resource to me. There's a question? Question. Thing we can do to help our veterans who have sacrificed for us. Press, pressure, pressure government. S pressure government to sit down with us, to sit down with, with veterans. The, 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 the decision makers of veteran services are not even veterans. The higher you go up, I'm talking the high, high, the high up you go, they're not even veterans. So we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to have veterans included in this conversation, not just direct and say this is what it's going to be. Anyone else? Any more questions? Where can they find you? All over, all over New York City, but. <laughs> <laughs>
But um, if you need to get in touch with me, um, Kevin Meggett, Kevin C. Meggett, um, at gmail.com, or you could go down to Black Veterans for Social Justice, um, which is at 665 Willoughby Avenue. Um, they've been a resource. We need more veteran uh, uh, providers to provide services for veterans because they have empathy towards veterans. A anything? And, and, and you can always reach out. He's easy to find. Uh, former city councilman Andy yeah, King. He can find him. Just Google his name and you'll find a whole bunch of Andy stuff. Andy King up. at NYC. You can catch me in. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much and God bless you. Bless you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, dear brother. We need everybody to gather everybody to gather. Oh, the family.